Did you know that there's a situation that could be going on within your body right now that might be causing you extreme anxiety and you're not even aware of it in the slightest? This symptom actually causes hormonal changes in the body and can create a situation of extreme fear within the body. So this is what the symptom is, guys. Low blood pressure, also known as hypotension, slash poorly functioning cardiac reflexes. So almost all of us take our body's ability to deal with the effects of gravity for granted. However, if this complex mechanism becomes dysfunctional, deconditioned or disrupted, many problems can arise. And it's worth noting at this point, that if you're somebody who experiences random bouts of anxiety throughout a day, and they seem to be unrelated to maybe your thought patterns or activities you're partaking in within that given day, it may be related to some underlying mechanism within the body that's actually creating this anxiety without you even recognizing it. So now here are just three ways that hypotension may just present itself. So number one here, we've got the blood pressure of 85 over 50 with a heart rate of 60 beats per minute. Now this is a low blood pressure with no compensatory response from your heart rate. And this is a presentation that would probably occur most likely in people who have completely lost the sympathetic innovation of their body or in elderly patients. Situation number two, we've got a blood pressure of 85 over 50 with a heart rate of 110 beats per minute. So again, we've got a low blood pressure. However, in this situation, the heart rate actually takes over and it compensates to try to artificially raise the blood pressure. And finally, is a situation of 120 over 80, so a normal type of blood pressure, but it's being sustained and maintained by an elevated heart rate of 120 beats per minute. And it's interesting when we observe these three different variables because the first one would suggest that actually the person may be experiencing anxiety because they could pass out at any given moment, their body could just faint, and so it would probably put them off doing certain activities. But focusing more on point two and three here, where the heart rate is 110 and 120 beats per minute, what really is anxiety? Well, to be honest, it's that thing where we experience some sort of event and in response to the event, our heart rate increases and it causes blood pressure to rise, it shuts down blood to the digestive tract, it causes increased respiration rate. It's this sympathetic response. But at the very heart of that is the increase in heart rate. So if we're experiencing this drastic increase of heart rate just from standing upright, then you can start to see how hypotension can really manifest itself with anxiety and the two actually go hand in hand. Now, an important point to note when it comes to blood pressure is that while an individual's blood pressure is dynamic and constantly changing throughout a given day, there's often a bunch of variables that come into play that can actually impact and influence somebody's blood pressure. And this can come from factors that are both in their control or out of their control. And some of these variables include gender. So for example, males tend to have a much higher blood pressure, while females tend to have a much higher resting heart rate on average. And then body composition as well. So for example, if you're somebody who is more overweight, your cardiac reflexes are going to have a bigger impact when it comes to gravity's effect on them. And so they're going to be better toned, which means that if you weigh more, you're going to have a higher blood pressure than somebody who weighs a lot less, and they're going to have more likely a higher resting heart rate. And then physical fitness. It's well known that athletes tend to have a lower resting heart rate, while sedentary people tend to have a much higher resting heart rate. And this is likely due to the effects of deconditioning on the cardiac reflexes. And then talking of those cardiac reflexes, they tend to decline with age, which means that we'll end up with a lower blood pressure and also through deconditioning or due to chronic illness. But how might a situation or a symptom like hypotension specifically, so low blood pressure specifically, create fear in the body and actually create these stress hormones that really fuel the centers of our brain that make us feel like we're in this fight or flight state continuously. So while hypertension, so high blood pressure, can produce migraine headaches because of increased vasoconstriction and increased cerebral spinal fluid concentration in the head, hypotension can produce lightheadedness due to increased vasodilation, so opening up of those blood vessels, and poor blood or oxygen delivery to the brain. 
So what tends to happen with these individuals is because fluid and blood delivery to the brain is so critical for all round function and survival, compensatory mechanisms need to be deployed in order to support that physiological function. And this primarily occurs via signaling to certain centers in the brain. The hypothalamus activates the adrenal medulla and excess amounts of adrenaline and other catecholamines are produced to help to speed up the contractility of the heart. So now let's look into some of the literature when it comes to hypotension and just how and why low blood pressure can create this state of heightened anxiety within an individual's body. So in Neural Mechanisms of Cardiovascular Regulation on page 102, it states that the limbic system is activated in response to hypotension. Activation of the limbic system releases hormones that cause us to experience a sense of alertness, fear and panic. And I'm sure many of you will have come across neural retraining programs online. These programs and people, these coaches that try to get you to retrain your brain through various different exercises. And one area of the brain that loads of them always focus on is the limbic system because it's one of the key areas where your body senses fear and it can create anxiety. So if hypotension is triggering that center of the brain, then it really needs to be something we address. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to overcome this chronic feeling of anxiety. And then in the book, Adrenergic Dysfunction and Psychobiology, it states that many stresses and threats are experienced through our perception of a given environment or situation. However, hypotension, along with hypoglycemia, which is low blood sugar, are just two situations where the body feels threatened internally and so forces the host to take action. And this is really important to note because you'll see so many people out there who tell you if you have anxiety, for example, or panic disorder, that you really need to focus on your perception of the world around you. You really need to start to adopt these ways to better deal with your environment. But if the problem's always going on internally, then it's going to be basically impossible to face the outside world with plenty of confidence and with a body that feels calm in approaching these situations. But yeah, I think one of the most important things to take away from this slide is that if you're somebody with chronic hypotension and low blood pressure, and maybe an elevated heart rate, especially in response to standing, then you need to be aware that just by standing and walking around in a given day, it's injecting this fear into your body and it's creating this heightened stress response. And so this is really a thing that needs to be looked at first before maybe addressing other factors to do with anxiety and fear. And this next slide really just builds on that point, and that's the fact that it might not just be all in your head. If you're somebody who's experienced anxiety for a long time and haven't considered the possibility of hypotension, including that cardiovascular compensation with that elevated heart rate, it might be worth looking into, especially if the methods below haven't benefited you. So for example, anti-anxiety meds, restrictive diets and supplements, anxiety management programs, neural retraining programs, breathing exercises, meditation and therapy as well. Just remember the mind is a powerful thing but if you're trying to fight against your basic physiology by telling yourself that everything's fine, I'm in a good situation, I don't feel anxious, I can approach and embrace this situation when really your body is telling you otherwise, Again, that's just something that's worth looking into because wouldn't it just be amazing to try best to balance that situation out and then approach situations in life and be able to go into them with confidence. But what about possible approaches to this situation? So if your blood pressure doesn't remain stable or raise very marginally between supine and standing, then some form of hypotension could be a real possibility. And I still personally believe that a functional neurologist is one professional that may be able to help you with this situation because many of them assess the function of your autonomic nervous system, especially when it comes to how it best deals with that stress of gravity and if it responds in an appropriate manner. So functional neurology may benefit you and I definitely advise you guys to check out the series I put together on it as well. Of course, cardiovascular reconditioning through aerobic exercise might also help. However, that is depending on your own personal exercise tolerance and your current health situation. And then finally, another possibility is that chronic upregulation of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which is your stress response, is actually contributing to your hypotension. 
and that's because stress hormones are vasodilating the peripheral slash muscular blood vessels. So of course it's going to struggle more so to push blood up to your head, up to your brain, and it's going to create this sense of fear within your brain, which is going to lead to those compensatory mechanisms, including that increased heart rate. 